Good morning, everybody. Good morning. morning. It's October 2nd. What are we celebrating today? The Feast of the Holy Guardian Angels. Feast of the Holy Guardian Angels today. And because it's a Feast of the Holy Guardian Angels, I have, a, I have my own personal guardian angel miracle that uh, we, can, we can relate, okay? We can narrate the story just to demonstrate to everybody how important it is to have this devotion to the holy guardian angels. The holy guardian angels are our real best friends, okay? Um, they are not imaginary friends like Jana's friends were when she was little. <laughs> they are real friends, okay? The guardian angels are real uh, uh, beings, real friends that God from all eternity has assigned to each and every one of us. Could you imagine that? Every one of us has a guardian angel that is dedicated just to to guide us, to help us through the our affairs of this world, both material and spiritual. Okay, so here goes a story that proves to everybody how real the guardian angels are. Okay, ready here? The year was 1998. How many of you were born at that time? <laughs> okay, 1998. Yeah, it wasn't the time of the dinosaurs, but uh, uh, of course, not, none of you were born yet, right? Um, I mean, I'm talking with my children. None of you were born. <clears throat> so I was driving home. I was, no, I wasn't driving home. I was riding a taxi cab on my way home <coughs> from work. And, uh, um, well, we, we were stuck in traffic in a heavily... Uh, um, in a heavy uh, traffic area, so I was stuck there, sitting on the inside a cab, uh, minding my own business. And then all of a sudden, the the door opens, and there was a holdupper with a gun to my face, demanding that I give everything I have. Okay, of course I was shocked, I was stunned, and what do you do? <laughs> so, oops, the phone's ringing. So, um, okay, so with a gun to your, to your face, what do you do? So I just gave him everything. He got my uh, briefcase, which, is, which contained everything I had for work and all my personal stuff, right? Um, and, and then he took my uh, laptop. Uh, so I got those two bags, two cases that he took with him. Anyway, I, I felt at that time that he was frantic. You know, he, he wanted me to rush, to hurry, just give him everything. And then he ran off. Okay, so I, I just had to tell the taxi cab driver, I said, I'm sorry now, I can't pay you. Well, my money is right there in my briefcase. Everything was in there. So, of course, the uh, taxi uh, cab driver was just, you know, uh, sorry it all happened that way, but he can't do anything about it, right? Okay, so he brought me home. That was night. So I figured, well... <clears throat> Uh, I can't go to the police station now to uh, report this, so I waited till the morning. So morning came, the following day, first thing I do was to go into the police station nearest my home at that time and uh, report the incident. And lo and behold, while I was waiting, standing there by the uh, uh, police department, I recognized somebody walking towards me. Right? Eh? And this was the guy who held me up last night. So already I was full of, you know, ah, all well, the rage coming back. Ah, I'm gonna get you. Okay? And then as he was, as he was visibly, uh, as he saw me, you know, um, angry, coming at him, wanting to come at him. He said, wait, 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 wait. I know you recognize me. Yes, I was the one who held you up last night. But, but, he says, I'm going to return everything I took from you. And I, I, you have to hear me out. He said, you have to hear me out. Uh, I, I have, I'm going to return everything I, I stole from you last night. And, and I want to explain myself. 
Eh? I'm going to explain myself. So if you would just, if you would just, uh, you know, come with me to my car, uh, you know, I'm going to explain what happened to, to, uh, to us last night. Okay. So I calmed down a little bit and I said, okay. He, oh, by the way, he said, you know, I figured you were going to be here in the police station this morning because this is the nearest police station to the place where I held you up. So I just figured, you know, maybe you were coming here and this is so, uh, yeah. So now I found you here. Right. Okay. So I said, okay, and just tell me what happened. So he says, when I had a gun to your face last night and as I was taking all your stuff from you, I saw your guardian angel beside you. See, he said, he saw my guardian angel beside me. And that is why he scampered away. And then that wasn't the end of it. When he got to his car, apparently, he opened up my, my briefcase, right? And there, in my briefcase, he saw uh, my rosary. He saw a small uh, New Testament book, which I use for my gospel reading. And he saw another spiritual uh, book. And uh, he saw images of Our Lady and the Guardian Angel and St. Joseph among my stuff, right? And you know what? After seeing all of those, he went straight to a church. And the church is the church of St. Jude, which was right beside Malacanang Palace. And this is, of course, the context of this, of course, is in the Philippines. He went straight to St. Jude's church. And there he prayed for hours and repented not only for having robbed me, but for all the bad things that he has done in his life. It turns out, as he confessed to me, he was actually a cop. He was a policeman who, of course, was a bad cop. And uh, he was assigned to the narcotics department of the police. And uh, he confessed to me that, uh, that he was making a living more from reselling what they confiscate from drug dealers than from the salary as a policeman. And he has been doing that for many years of his life. And that this incident of holding me up and seeing my guardian angel was a point of conversion for him. And so he actually, I actually joined him in his car and he said, all your stuff are in the Manila Police Department. I deposited them there because I am a police. Uh, I mean, I am assigned to the Manila Police Department. So we went. I went with him. I joined him in his car. We went to the police department. And in this trip between uh, the police department in Quezon City to the Manila Police Department was a good hour of, of traveling by car back then. And there he told me, his whole life story about how he has, I don't know how many children now, uh, four children, I think, who went to the best schools. Ah, wait a minute. The best school? He said they went to La Salle. Best so, school. The best school. <laughs> okay, Kobe argues it's the best school. But could you imagine a policeman in the Philippines sending his college kids to La Salle? Uh, the University uh, of La Salle in the Philippines, that required a lot of money. So you, you can believe his story that uh, he, he, the only way he could afford, the only way a policeman could afford to send his children to schools like La Salle is if he was doing some extracurricular activities uh, besides uh, being a cop. And, uh, and well, we realized that, well, this is what he was doing. He was stealing and robbing and not only reselling um, uh, things he confiscated from drug dealers, but he was also sticking up people like me. But this occasion <clears throat> was his point of conversion. Okay? So, <clears throat> excuse me. He admitted to being converted by this incident. 
He returned all my stuff and we parted in good terms. And to this day, I pray for this policeman okay? and his family that hopefully his conversion is real and is lasting. But that, folks, is the miracle of my guardian angel. And you know, it, I always tell people, I always tell my kids, befriend your guardian angel. Be real good friends with your guardian angel because your guardian angel is real. And, and your guardian angel should be uh, as real to you as your best friend. In fact, I've been encouraging everybody, give, give your guardian angel a name, right? Because your friends have names. So your guardian angel should have a name. You want to know the name my guardian angel? Yeah, of course, my kids know. And it's funny. I call him Popeye. And why so? Because, because I've named him Popeye since I was a little kid. And Popeye to me was my idol, was my, was my uh, cartoon uh, uh, hero. Right back in the day when I was growing up, Popeye and Brutus, uh, and and uh, and Olive, right, and uh, who was this? Uh, I'll pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. Uh, what's his name now? <laughs> Jeez, I forgot. Anyway, uh, so Popeye was my regular uh, entertainment, and uh, Popeye was strong. Popeye was the defender. Popeye was uh, the hero. Okay, of the story, and so. Well, my guardian angel is my hero. My guardian angel is my Popeye. So I've called him Popeye ever since, and he's Popeye forever for me, as far as I'm concerned. Right? And, and he has helped me in many, many more ways than one. I'm telling you, this miracle of the holdup is just one of them. And he, he, uh, God allowed this miracle to happen, maybe to defend me, okay? To defend me on one on one end of it, but at the same time to convert this fellow, to convert this cop. So the guardian angel can help convert people. So if you have if you have friends or or or, or uh, family members who need a little bit more spiritual push, pray to their guardian angels. Ask their guardian angel to make these uh, these friends and, and family members of yours behave. And convert and, and do better. When you're having a hard time understanding your schoolwork, ask your guardian angel to help you. When you're having a hard time obey, ask your guardian angel to help you obey. When you're having a hard time to pray, ask your guardian angel to help you pray. Your guardian angel is there to help you with everything you need from your spiritual, intellectual, academic, and even material needs. You hear me many times when we're looking for parking space, right? That's also the other miracle of the guardian angel for me all the time. It never fails. When I have a hard time looking for parking, I always call on Popeye. Popeye, okay, find me parking today. And it never fails. It never fails. Sometimes he's a little slow, but... He always finds parking. Okay? So I encourage you, everybody, the guardian angel is your best friend. He's your real BFF forever. Even before you were born, God already assigned a guardian angel to you. See? Even before you were born. So because God, uh, God already anticipated your birth. And he had prepared for it by preparing a guardian angel exclusively for you. That is his only task. To guard you and to guide you. Okay? And so, and that is why uh, here at home in our family, the prayer to the guardian angel, uh, as well as the prayer to St. Michael, is something that is a constant refrain of our entire day. Okay? From the moment we wake up in the morning, from the moment we, wake, we, we do the uh, uh, morning offering, right? After the morning offering, we pray the prayer to St. Michael, and we pray the prayer to, to the guardian angel. And that's what we, we do every day every day in order to foster that devotion to the guardian angel so today is the special day of your guardian angel so make it very special for him by talking to him a lot today giving thanks for everything that he has done for you and to ask him to always be with you forever okay let's do that today have a good day everybody and happy feast day bye, bye.